Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Company 119's The Coffee Cup. My name is Ryan Gilkerson. I'm lead creative here at Company 119, and we're glad you could join us for another episode as part of Cleveland Web Design Week. We've had an awesome week. We had Kelly Kanda on from Colossal Cupcakes yesterday talking about digital branding. Before that, it was John Stursa from I'mFromCleveland.com. So we've been giving you a lot of examples of great Cleveland web designs. As a matter of fact, if you go to company119.com slash dispatch, there's a great blog right now talking about our top 10 favorite web designs in Cleveland. With that being said, we want to give you some tangible things for you to work on so that your digital branding presence can be even better than it is right now with our today's podcast about developing a digital branding strategy for Cleveland. There was a great article today. Uh, The website that I got it from is freesparks.com, how to create a digital brand strategy for optimal growth. This has a lot of good stuff. Um, They get into a little more detail in the blog than we're going to today, so check it out if you get a chance. But um, digital branding strategy, parts of it don't change no matter where you are. You could take a digital branding strategy if it's successful and you could put it in any part of the world, but there are nuances that are geographic specific and we'll get into that in just a little bit too. So where do we start every time we talk strategy on the coffee cup? We start with your uh, tangible goals. Start with some things like I want to increase overall awareness. I want to build positive perception through interaction and I want to encourage loyalty and advocacy. So when you talk about building positive perception through interaction, that can be through blog content that people are sharing, copying, reading, commenting on. Social media is a great place for positive interaction. A lot of companies are using Twitter for customer service, for example, giving a real personal touch, being able to get in and talk to people, although you can use chatbots and they can be effective too and make people feel like they're getting positive interaction. But the more you interact with a brand, especially if you're a small business in a city like Cleveland, the more likely they are to go back and say, this is a great company to talk to. They really take me seriously. They value me and I'm going to be loyal for them, which accomplishes that last goal that you have there. So what do we have as far as tools to make this happen? Well, here's your digital branding toolbox. A good digital strategy will incorporate your website, great content marketing, great social media, email marketing, and pay-per-click advertising. Now, later on in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing automation, which ties all of those things together. But what happens is a lot of people think, I've got a Facebook page. That's all I need. I send emails to my customers. That's all I need. The truth is, yes, those are good starts. But you can only get better by having more of these tools at your disposal. The more of these that you're capitalizing on at a time, the better off you're going to be with your digital branding strategy. So make that happen. Um, The keys for branding your business in Cleveland. I love this. Here's what you've got to know. You have to know your brand's purpose. You have to know your target audience. You have to know your competition. You have to know your brand's voice. You have to know what you can offer. And then you need to make sure that everybody else knows these things too. Let's talk about these things a little bit. Your brand's purpose. I always think of the the company Tom's that sells shoes when I think of a company's brand purpose. Yes, on the surface, they are just selling shoes. But what they do is they every time you buy a pair of shoes, they send another pair of shoes overseas to people that are less fortunate. So their purpose is bigger than just selling shoes. That helps their customers feel like they're making a commitment to something bigger than themselves when they buy shoes. Now, does everybody have to use this strategy? No. But if this is your strategy, like it's Tom's strategy, They need to make that a part of every marketing effort they have so that people know exactly what the company is here for. Your target audience is so important. We've talked before about building personas, knowing who your your audience is, putting a face to them, building up that persona so that you can really see who you're targeting to. That's so important. Know your competition. Hey, watch what they're doing. If they're better than you, if they're bigger than you, watch them and study them. Incorporate parts that have made them successful into your strategy. The parts that you don't like, eliminate those. If you don't think they're working, if it's something that you see is not helping that brand succeed, get rid of it. You don't have to worry about it. But you have to make sure that you're paying attention to what other people are doing or else you're not going to be able to see a clear vision for how to succeed in your marketplace. 
And then also, you want to know your brand's voice. If you're a luxury car line, you don't want to talk the same way that you would if you were selling trucks. There's going to be a difference in your messaging. Know what your voice is. Know what you can offer. There's things about your company that make it unique that nobody else can offer. Know what those things are and then offer those things to your customers. Make sure they know they're available and make sure that everyone else knows these things are here. Make sure that everybody else knows how wonderful your company is. Get that brand awareness up. Now you put it all together. Use what you learned about yourself to run campaigns on all platforms to get your message across. Integrate your content from one platform to the next to provide a seamless experience, experience <clears throat> excuse me, and plan campaigns, not one-off posts. So digital marketing automation, that's where this all comes in. Things that you put on your website, blogs, things that you're putting up uh, in terms of content, services that you offer, those can spin off into social posts. They can also spin off into email campaigns. Videos that you make for your YouTube channel can be used across other channels as well. When you present a united front with that digital brand strategy, it lets people know exactly what they can expect from your brand. For example, our digital marketing week this week. I'm doing the podcast here. I'm going to take this podcast. I'm going to turn it into a written blog that's going to be on our website that I'm going to use for traffic generation. It's on our YouTube. I'm then going to put this on our social media pages so that people can find us there. And in our nurturing email that we're going to be sending out in December, we're going to have links to the blogs on there. So it all goes together to present one front that Cleveland Marketing Week was something that we did and we wanted people to pay attention to. That's all part of brand identity, brand awareness, and if you know your customers, you're going to give them content that they're really encouraged about seeing on all different platforms. And then, last but not least, when you're talking about strategy for your local business, mention Cleveland or Chardon for that matter, or Willoughby or Mentor, wherever you are. Localize your social posts and even your on-page content. This helps you with local search, and it also lets your audience know that you're familiar with them and the area that you're operating in. We have a company called Radar that we work with. That's a neighborhood car care center. That's their branding. They want to be known as the guys in the neighborhood. Even though they're a chain, they want to be the guys in the neighborhood that fix your car. So how do you do that? Well, what we've done is we've looked at how to localize for all of the different locations. They have 11 locations, I believe, right now. And uh, what we've done is we've put content on their pages that mention those cities. We've talked about them on the website. We've built pages specific for each of the locations. Then we went back to social media. And when we do social media posts, for example, they've got a, 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 a business in Solon. One of their locations is in Solon. So we might put up a post that talks about something great that's happening in Solon. Maybe it's a community event. Maybe it's something great that the high school did. But we let people know that we can be associated with that city and that we're here as a member of the community. And Radar really benefits from that. And they're able to become that neighborhood car care place. So listen, all you have to do is take everything that you love about Cleveland, everything that you love about your city, and be passionate about it and be an advocate for your city with your content and then people would be an advocate of you because they want to support a local business even if you're not so local. So we hope you learn more about developing a brand strategy for your business in Cleveland before you finish your first cup of coffee than your competition will all day and we look forward to seeing you again here on Cleveland Web Design Week on the Coffee Cup.